Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 3L, where we're finally going to be talking about heterozygous phenotypes. Phenotypes where individuals have two different alleles instead of two identical alleles. We'll talk about the same four phenotypes that we discussed in the past two videos. So, the W locus causing white flowers in morning glories, the P locus causing pink flowers, the ABO blood type alleles, and cystic fibrosis. So here's our morning glory flowers again, the dark blue flowers produced by the W plus allele when homozygous, white flowers produced when the defective allele is present and the gene is not transcribed, and light blue flowers produced when plants have one functional copy and one defective copy of white. Here's our pink morning glory flowers. Now, here's the pathway again. And when the P gene is knocked out, the homozygote has pink flowers instead of the normal blue flowers. What's the phenotype of the heterozygote? That's the genotype, one plus allele, one minus allele. The phenotype is the same as the wild type homozygote. So both of these genotypes have the same phenotype. What about our blood type alleles? Individuals homozygous for the A allele have A sugars and blood type A. Individuals homozygous for the B allele have B sugars and blood type B. And individuals homozygous for the defective O allele have no sugars and blood type O. What about the heterozygotes? Well, there's three to consider because we've got three alleles. There's the AO heterozygote, the BO heterozygote, and the AB heterozygote. Now, the AO heterozygote produces less of the A sugar on its red blood cells because it only has one functional copy of A, but that's still enough for the blood type to be type A. Similarly, individuals heterozygous for the B allele and the O allele make less of the B sugar on their blood cells, but it's enough that they're blood type B. Individuals who are heterozygous for an A allele and a B allele do something different. They put both A sugars and B sugars on their red blood cells. So some positions will have an A sugar, some will have a B sugar, and their blood type their blood reacts to antibodies for both A and B, so they have blood type AB. Finally, here's our cystic fibrosis situation. Again, we're thinking about the common delta F508 mutation that deletes one codon, three base pairs. So here's the genotypes, the DNA sequences. The wild type of individual has both copies with these base pairs. The double homozygote mutant is missing these base pairs, and the heterozygote has both, one copy of each DNA sequence in all their cells. What about their phenotypes? Well, if we think of messenger RNA as a phenotype, then the heterozygote has both phenotypes. They've got both the full-length messenger RNA and the shorter messenger RNA. What about protein production? Well, the double header mutant produces none, but the heterozygote produces half as much protein because they've got one functional copy of the gene. What about fertility and lifespan? Now, the phenotype of the heterozygote is the same as the phenotype of the wild type homozygote. We don't see any health related problems at all in individuals who are heterozygous for a wild type allele and the defective allele. So what have we done? We've taken the first step towards being able to think clearly and rigorously about the phenotypes caused by being heterozygous, by having different alleles of a gene in a single individual. And we looked so far, we've just looked at examples. An example where the phenotype was intermediate, an example where the heterozygote had the same phenotype 
as one of the homozygotes. For ABO blood types, we saw both the same phenotype for ABA and O and ABB and O home heterozygotes, and we saw a case where the heterozygote expressed both of the phenotypes that have been seen in the heterozygotes. That's the ABOAB heterozygote. Finally, for cystic fibrosis, we saw that what kinds of interactions you saw depended on what aspect of the phenotype you were looking at. Even though we were always looking at the same genotype, we would say, oh, it's blended, or we see both, or we see the heterozygote is like the homozygote, depended on what aspect we were looking at. Now, coming up next, we're going to move to a more rigorous analysis of what's going on in these cells and how we describe it, um, introducing the concept of dominance. I hope to see you there.